Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my recipe for a spicy and traditional coconut shoka. Now, I already shared this recipe a while back on my channel, but I decided to reshare it for you guys, give it a little update because my video qualities have gotten better within the past couple of years. So I hope you guys sit back, relax, and watch how I put together my coconut shoka. So I'm going to start off by roasting all of my coconut. So I'm using fresh coconut today, that is what you have to use to make the coconut choco, there is no other way. So basically what you want to do is when you bust open your coconut in half, you're going to go ahead and dig the flesh out from the inside. Once you dig it out, you're going to put it on your grill, or if you have a fireside or any type of open flame, you can go ahead and roast the coconut on top. You basically want to roast it until the coconut is nice and dark brown all over. And you don't want to burn it too much, nor do you want it to be too light because you want that coconut chocolate to have a really nice color in the end. My grill is on a medium high heat right now, and it took me about 15 minutes to roast my coconut like I wanted it, but you can go ahead and roast it as dark or as light as you prefer. So if you're using your grill, you're going to have to regulate how long each piece of coconut takes. As you guys can see, the small piece of coconut I'm holding up took a lot faster than the bigger pieces. So you want to keep removing them as they get fully cooked. The bigger pieces, I'll keep on rotating and turning them until they are cooked as well. This is all of my coconut after I finish roasting it on my grill. Again, as I said, if you want it to be darker, you can make them darker. And if you want them to be lighter, you can make them lighter. But I think this is the perfect color for my coconut choka. So I'm gonna allow this to cool for a few minutes because remember when coconut gets hot, all of the fat within it is very hot and it will burn your hands. So let it cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. After your coconut has cooled slightly, you're gonna go ahead and take each piece of coconut and you're going to scrape it. The reason why we scrape it is just to get any of that black residue or black soot off of the top that usually occurs when you grill it or you roast it over an open flame. It's not much scraping especially when you use it on the grill and you don't make it too dark but if you make them really much darker than I have you're going to want to scrape them really well. I also found that by taking a microplane or a very very small grater you can go ahead and get off the black crunchy pieces. It really helped me do it because the knife was taking a little bit too long and as you guys can see I got off most of those really dark black spots. So that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm using the combination of the knife and the grater, but whatever tools you have in your kitchen, you can go ahead and use those to get them scraped just like this. So I scraped all of my coconut. As you guys can see, they're still nice and dark brown, but I did take off most of that black color that was on them. Remember, you could use your knife or you could use the grater like I did. And I'm also gonna have some garlic as well as some hot pepper that is gonna go in my coconut choker. So essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of those pieces of coconut, my garlic and my hot pepper, I'm going to put them in my food processor and pulse them until I get a coarse texture. So I went ahead and I put my coconut, the hot pepper and the garlic in different batches into my food processor and as you guys can see after pulsing it a few times I got a very nice grainy texture. Now we're not done with this, we're going to go ahead and add this coconut mixture into my mortar and pestle to go ahead and grind it a little finer than this. And I also wanted to mention I'm going on with a little bit of salt and this is salt to taste. Now I'm using my mortar and pestle today but by all means if you do not have a mortar and pestle you can use a masala brick, that traditional masala brick used in Trinidad or Guyana. And if you don't have the masala brick, try to get your hands on a mortar and pestle. I'll have the Amazon link for this down below in the description box. Now, the reason why I'm using the mortar and pestle after I use the food processor is because the food processor doesn't really do that great a job of getting that classic coconut choka texture. What happens is if you pulse it too long, it actually starts to get too fine. And when it's too fine, it's actually too rich in your mouth and it really doesn't have a great texture or a taste. So you wanna go ahead and just put it into the mortar and pestle so this way you can pound it to the texture that you desire. I use the food processor to get most of the work done and get it nice and grainy and then I finish it off in the mortar and pestle. So I finished grinding all of my coconut choka within my mortar and pestle. And remember, I already added salt, I already added pepper, I also added garlic. Now, after I added all of those ingredients in and I pounded it, I went ahead and I gave it a taste and I thought that it needed a little bit more pepper to have a really nice kick. And I also think, thought it needed a little bit more salt. So that's a very small fix. You just go ahead and add some crushed pepper as well as some salt into your mixture and you keep on mixing. The same goes for if you wanted some added garlic, just go ahead and grind up a little bit of garlic and add it in. Basically at this stage, this is done. You're just gonna keep mixing it, taste it for any seasonings you may wanna add. And then at that point you can serve it. So my coconut choka is all done. It looks and smells so delicious. I have my dal and rice boiling off to the side 
and just within a few minutes I'll be able to eat this amazing dish with everything else. Now coconut choka is just one of those things that you can make really fast and really simple and it makes for a complete meal when you eat it with dal and rice. Now again, everybody makes their things differently. I know a lot of people will put different herbs in their coconut choka. That's not the way that my family does it though. They make it just nice and simple like this. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. And of course, leave your amazing comments down below. And I'll be seeing you guys again very soon.